Let's see if I can't wrap up where I'm at in Game of Thrones because I'm basically not gonna be watching Thrones. I'm trying to keep like a rule of thumb, like, hey, if I watch like a sport game, if I watch the Eagles or I watch the Phillies one night, I'm just not gonna watch Game of Thrones solely because that's just a lot of sitting in front of a TV already. Watching another hour episode of Game of Thrones, maybe two on top of that if there's like a stupidly big cliffhanger. Sometimes three if we go on a whole ass binge and I, I just can't do that. Too much shit to do, too much video games to play, too many videos to make, but quick Game of Thrones recap. We're somewhere halfway into the fifth season. Some shit just went down for, for Daenerys. The silent, wow, I already forget their fucking name. Silent servants, silent serpents. There are these dudes with like, I thought I just got a roundhouse by fucking Mike Tyson there. I have no idea what the hell I just saw on my screen. They're revolting against Daenerys for her ruling Meneer now. Still don't really know their whole motive, or at least I don't. I can't exactly piece together like why they're revolting. It could just be like the old masters revolting against not having their little uh, servants. I don't know if I can actually say what they actually are on fucking YouTube. They just went on a huge ass murder rampage, killing a bunch of Unsullied, stabbing Grey Worm in the lung with a knife i don't think you can live from that sir alan he basically became a human shish kebab i guess technically still don't know if he's like officially dead but in that day and age i don't think i don't think there's gonna be any kind of fucking lotion you can put on them wounds to heal that i don't think Daenerys really knows what's going on yet at the same time that's all happening we ended up finding out where Varys and Tyrion ended up escaping to Varys's whole plan was to take Tyrion to go see Queen Daenerys. His whole mentality is everything he does is for the better of the realm, for the best of the realm. Still believes that Tyrion has a massive role to play and just won't give up on him. Seriously, everybody needs a boy like Varys in their life, man. At least I say that now, because you never know who's playing on what side of the goddamn coin. It's a very long way to get from Westeros to the other side of the world where Daenerys is. So they've been traveling in a bunch of boxes, like basically staying hidden so nobody sees them because Tyrion is a Lannister and he's the imp of the Lannister. So he's kind of obvious to make out. Tyrion ended up somehow convincing Varys to let him out of the box and let him like walk around. Not Karth. Bravos? They might be in? All I know is a really big city. They ended up going to one of their fancy, um, fancy clubs. That's the best way I can put it. Tyrion was about to get his usual service, but he actually stopped. And even himself, he's like, this is not like me. You like, well, I don't know why I'm I'm hesitating right now. So he ended up just walking out to take a piss to kind of like relieve himself. My bet is that he's still in love with Shay. He just can't bring himself to do that. I don't know if maybe that girl reminded him of Shay because she also had darkish black hair. Maybe that also that like attitude that Shay also had. But that's where Ser Jonah found Tyrion and is now his captor taking him to see the queen, even though he just got exiled because of the whole uh, being a spy and sending letters to Varys and is not being as of a loyal companion as she once thought. Tyrion freaking tore into this dude, like, saying, like, oh, yeah, you're Sir Jonah, because I can see your sigil or whatever on your breastplate, and you just got banished. Basically read him, like, a goddamn book, and then Sir Jonah just said, all right, bet, I'm just gonna give you the meanest left hook of the goddamn century and just get you to shut the hell up for a little bit. Then there's the whole Winterfell Sansa situation, because I basically have not skipped the intro once so far, especially after I was told to be like, yeah, sometimes the intro actually changes depending on what happens in the show like the first time that i noticed that happening was when winterfell was burning after theon took over and all his boys burned it to the fucking ground so once i saw that happen be like oh there's no way i'm gonna skip an intro now i might miss out on something i could not express the just anger and hatred for the boltons once i saw winterfell stopped smoking and their sigil got changed to the boltons which if anybody didn't know is basically a human laying like a star on a board colored red as to show them being flayed alive as the boltons tradition super fucked up it honestly fits the boltons especially ramsey because they are just a bunch of fuckheads samsa and littlefinger are now at winterfell samsa was originally going to say no but of course littlefinger being the manipulating little fuck that he is was saying that yeah you could run away but you shouldn't you're the only living stark which he basically is because i'll get to area in a moment so he's saying like, you gotta avenge your family the north will follow you they won't follow the boltons she agrees for better or worse for either littlefinger's reasons or for her own for as much of a dirtbag littlefinger is he does have have some good fucking like reasons like it does make sense for her to go back yeah it's gonna be absolute hell when she marries Ramsay. She has not married him yet, so I don't know if that actually goes through or not. But if that does, I mean, it's gonna suck for a while. But then again, here's the key thing, which kind of makes the whole idea for Sansa to go back to Winterfell. When she went to her quarters, which I actually don't know if it was like her original quarters, there was a servant there who said, welcome home, Sansa. Sansa kind of said thank you, but also it was like kind of weird. I don't know if she might like recognize the lady, maybe made some connection. But the next sentence that old lady said that was taking care of a room, she said,
said, the North will never forget or the North still remembers. Still showing that they are still loyal to the North. They are not going to be loyal to the Boltons. They remembered what happened to the Starks and who did what. Cementing that the North remembers. The North remembers what happened. And in due time, they will follow Sansa into bow because they are loyal to the Starks. Because the Starks are one of their own. The Boltons are certainly not. Reek almost ran into Sansa a couple of times. Reek would see Sansa first. Reek would like hide away, be doing whatever chores, shoveling whatever shit into whatever bucket. I want to see what happens when Reek and Sansa first meet because it's only a matter of time. I just hope after everything fucking Sansa's been through, she just becomes the biggest boss like her mom was. Obviously, she's got that Stark blood in her and that Stark blood, ooh, when that starts boiling, woo, baby. I know Littlefinger just got... Wow, I fucking suck. Littlefinger also just got called back to King's Landing. Because Cersei right now is... um. There's a lot of interesting pieces being moved over there. Her father's dead. Tyrion escaped. Jaime is actually on the hunt to find his quote-unquote niece in Dorne. Because um, Obiern, uh, his death. The Martells are not going to be too happy that another one of theirs has died in King's Landing to the hands of the Lannisters. And the whole situation in Dorne is crazy. Because the king is like... It was a trial by combat. There's nothing that we can do he went out the most like legal proper Let's way or go. whatever can't really start a war about that but his sister or whatever is like hey look at that play of the game i haven't got one of these in ages oh i filthy with it boy as the king of dorn is sitting in his chair watching over i just realized those boxes on the right look like a minecraft character <laughs> So I don't really know if that one chick in Dorne is going to go through with uh, butchering the little Lannister girl and like sending pieces back, kind of like what Ramsay did. The girl in Dorne currently has three other like badass lady warriors supporting her cause. Haven't seen anything about that yet. Going back to King's Landing, since basically Cersei is the only Lannister in King's Landing now, she's kind of going to other groups and other people to, I guess, subconsciously support her claims or support her motives and ideas. The father of House Tyrell, Master of Coin, just got quote unquote sent to a very expensive and very proper business trip to the Iron Bank with the leader of the Kingsguard. That dude's gonna die without a doubt. He is so fucked fucking dead she also does not like the maester i believe they're called the dudes with, like all like the chains on them and like their robes she doesn't like the guy on the high council which i don't like him either he's a scumbag but she's also resorting to like a band master who like he has the cloak on but he doesn't have the chain because his research was a um too extreme so see we actually got a glimpse into his lab and as he's like writing a note to Littlefinger from Circe. As she leaves, you see like a whole ass body underneath a white tarp just start violently shaking. So I'm just like, yo, there ain't no, I mean, there's magic, but no way there's going to be like zombies, right? That would be ridiculous. I guess there's kind of zombies if you count the White Walkers, but that's magic zombies. She's also going to the High Scepter, the Serp, Serp the Scepter of the Seven, who I guess is like a religious group, but the dude, like he just wears rags. He doesn't like wear shoes or anything. He's very like, talks a lot about staying pure and being like, everybody's part of the seventh and we all like gotta get along and whatnot Cersei was like what happened to your shoes and he's like oh i gave them away to somebody who needed them more just kind of showing like he's like a very down-to-earth person just wants to take care of people and he wants us all like to live together in harmony as the lords of the seven uh kingdoms like forever intended so i don't know if that like rung a bell with cersei because then she had a meeting with him and basically gave him an army or not an army but basically gave him the weapons and the means to arm themselves with her motive being like yeah people in like high power we can't punish all the people that we want or punish everybody that deserves it so i'm gonna fucking i was gonna follow that person until i got him man <laughs> Oh, there you are. Actually, one of Cersei's cousins is also in this, like, cult. Who they have, like, a big old circle with markings, like, scarred in on their forehead. Any sinners of the Seventh will be persecuted to the highest extent of their law. Lady Martell, who is now married to, uh... Jomin? Jomin? This dude is, like, way too fucking sweet to be a king. I mean, granted, the dude's, like, freaking 12, so... The queen's brother, the Martell pillow biter, he got arrested, obviously, in the eyes of the Seventh. That is a sin, and all will be punished, regardless of their status. And we actually got to see a little peek of how weak the, the new king actually is, because he went to his mother and was like, Hey, I demand that you free the queen's brother. And, it, 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 I mean, it, if you want, you got time for it. I mean, that'd be kind of that'd be kind of neat and Cersei was just playing like well you're the king I did not arrest him I had no part in it because I mean technically she didn't dude I am so garbage
I thought I was about to get like back to back tomahawk team kills right there. This dude is sniping in fucking hardcore Nuketown. What an absolute animal. This dude's mental must be the most battle hardened weapon of mass destruction in order for you to be doing that. I'm also like spawning behind them, so I don't really. Oh my god. That was like the greatest spawn I've ever had. Also, the most broken spawn. Arya, she got taken into that temple and she was just kind of there, just being a servant for her for a while. And she's like, I'm kind of pissed off. Like, what the hell? I thought I was supposed to learn. And there's this one like really creepy, like horror movie, like lady girl walking around. Basically, she's like soulless, emotionless, even more monotone than me doing a fucking commentary recording. Arya kind of realized what it means to be a man without a face. Pretty much is like Arya Stark has to not be Arya. Like he said, somebody who claims to be no one. Arya Stark's haircut, wearing Arya Stark's clothes with Arya Stark's silver and Arya Stark's weapon. How can somebody be nobody when they look just like Arya Stark? Really grabbed Arya's attention. I can't be Arya Stark anymore. I have to let go of that person if I want to truly understand and truly be nobody. She ends up tying her clothes up with a rock, throwing them in the bottom of the lake. She also throws her coin pouch. Then it came the needle, her sword that John himself crafted for her and basically gave it to her even though she wasn't supposed to have it she stood there for a long time staring at needle and basically for the first time in a while we got we saw her cry we saw her get emotional not being able to part with needle and she she ended up putting needle in a bed of rocks next to the lake so in a sense like hiding Arya Stark for the time being so she hasn't fully committed yet and I already know it's gonna like bite her in the ass because somehow Vada Makores or whatever his actual name is he's obviously gonna find out he's obviously gonna know but she has not gone to any training yet she got killed by bunghole 71 okay, we also got to see Jon Snow who has been now dubbed the 998th Lord Commander of the Night's Watch the only thing we really saw him do besides beheading the one coward he was basically just signing papers that's actually a dope ass looking calling card i might rock that saw john snow he was just signing a bunch of papers to all these different lords in the north or i don't know if they were lords in general asking for recruits for the night's watch and he actually ended up getting to lord bolton because obviously he's the head of winterfell now or the warden of the north obviously john didn't want to do that because he killed ralph kind of just a like, not a nice dude nobody in the north likes him the red woman actually paid john a visit to try and convince him to leave the night's watch leave the north and ride with stannis to go to Winterfell to help take over and John's like my place is here I'm a brother of the Night's Watch I am now Lord Commander I cannot do that and then the Red Woman does her sleazy scumbag ways to try to convince John by um showing him what life is and John I guess was kind of going with it a little bit but then he like snapped out of it he's like I can't do this and the Red Woman's like why not we're like men and women meant to you know unite and like do things together <laughs> I love Call of Duty. <laughs> John basically stops because he's like, I can't do this because I love the Nether. I still love her. The Egret is unfortunately no longer with us. But the most craziest part about that whole interaction as the Red Woman leaves, obviously, like, disappointed. Be like, damn, this dude is, like, a bigger man than I've ever thought he was staying loyal to a code. She turns around at the door and then she says, you know nothing, Jon Snow. Dude, I swear to God, if the Red Woman had anything to do with the whole Egret situation, I'm going to be the most living motherfucker to ever walk this earth. I'm going to be so angry. Poor freaking Jon Snow, man. Can't have shit. You could obviously imagine Jon Snow is probably just having the biggest mind fuck of his life. That's exactly what Egret said. God damn it. <laughs> Dude, I'm just too fucking accurate with my tomahawks, man. I don't know what what is about it. Throwing knives are like next level right now. As soon as that left my fucking hands, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's not going to end well. Might have missed a few things here and there. Whatever that I did miss, I just got to watch another episode of the good old Game of Thrones, and then I will update you guys. I'm now seeing that this file is getting jive freaking enormous i'm gonna go finish out this game watch the fightings absolutely do what they do best and just bully other teams thank you guys so much for watching this video hopefully you guys enjoy this little recap hopefully i'm getting a little better with the commentaries not speaking as monotone like i am being forced to make a fucking video at least this recording i've been feeling a lot better what i wanted to do oh my god
Why wouldn't you shoot? Thank you guys so, mu so much for watching this video. Hope you guys have a grand rest of your morning, evening, or afternoon, whatever time it is in your little corner of the world that you're watching this video at. Stay safe out there, stay hydrated, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.